Downhill skiing. Athletes traveling at speeds of up to 120 kilometers per hour must negotiate a series of twists and turns to arrive at the bottom in the fastest possible time. But in a sport where hundreds of a second can make all the difference between hero and zero, how do these athletes make sure they are leaving no margin left on game? In their pursuit of the perfect descent, just how much comfort are they willing to sacrifice? And more importantly, how do they go to the toilet? Well, as it turns out, it's all a matter of timing. See what I do? You try and do better, man. Like everything else these elite athletes do, their race day regime is scripted down to the last second, and that includes comfort breaks. It can be a delicate balancing act to ensure that you stay hydrated without having to rush to use the facilities all the time. <laughs> Skiers will drink half to three quarters of a litre of water two hours before their first run, with further sips throughout the day. Dehydration can make you feel fatigued, especially at altitude, so getting this right is paramount. The good news is that on race days, there is plenty of spare time. Sure, there are course inspections, warm-ups, stretches, etc., but mostly you're spending a lot of time on the mountain waiting to do your two runs. And that's where timing comes in. If you time it right, answering the call of nature shouldn't be a problem. And if you don't, well, all the more reason to find the fastest way down to the bottom. But even if everything is working like clockwork, getting in and out of your ski suit is no mean feat. So what do we know about these ski suits? Well, for one thing, we know that only Olympic athletes can pull this look off. I'm looking at you, casual skier who thinks he's Bodie Miller. Leave it to us pros. This suit is so tight. Ski suits need to keep athletes warm, but without slowing them down. That's particularly important in a sport where every split second counts. Just ask Urs Kalin, who is beaten by just two hundredths of a second by his rival, Marcus Vassmeyer, in Lillehammer, 1994. Historically, the Europeans have had the fastest suits, but lately, the US has been catching up. Researchers in its high-performance laboratory analysed various fabrics with an electron microscope, selecting one that's textured like shark skin to better manipulate airflow and minimise drag. Now, if you're like me, you're picturing the entire US ski team in shark skin suits. You see, just like in other winter Olympic sports, drag is the enemy of skiers. Minimising it is an important consideration in the physics of skiing. Drag, or air resistance, works in the opposite direction to a skier's velocity, slowing him down. One way of reducing drag is by reducing his projected frontal area by tucking himself into a tiny ball like this. The other way a skier can reduce drag is by making sure his ski suit is as closely fitted as possible, with no additional material to flap around and slow him down. The suits the professionals wear are custom tailored, mapped to the contours of each athlete's body and put through extensive wind tunnel testing to make sure they can withstand speeds of up to 120 kilometers per hour without flapping. Ski suits have to follow rules, just like any other piece of equipment. Number one, the suit must be made of a textile material. No plastics or treatments allowed. Number two, no pun intended, air permeability must be a minimum of 30 litres per square metre per second. That's basically a fancy way of saying air tightness. This rule means that suits have to be able to breathe, keeping the athlete more comfortable and reducing the risk of overheating and dehydration. It's tested on a special machine, which is basically like a really expensive vacuum cleaner. This measures the flow of air through the unstretched fabric. This is called plumbing. I mean, what a word. Plumbing. <laughs> And three, no darts or tucks allowed. Seams are for the sole purpose of holding the suit together. This rule was put into place to outlaw the major advancement in suit aerodynamics called Speedwire, pioneered by former skier Dave Jacobs. With the help of a couple of rocket scientists, yes, actual rocket scientists, he developed a technology that reduced the aerodynamic drag of the skier by more than 40%. Skiing's governing body banned it in 1997, claiming it gave skiers an unfair advantage. Of course he did. He had rocket scientists working on it. So, your suit has to be within these very strict guidelines. The good news is that you can have almost anything you want as the pattern. Check out these babies. So, back to the burning question. How do they actually pee? The short answer is 
not easily. Most athletes are wearing several layers of compression under their suits, a type of long underwear that facilitates muscle recovery, circulation and warmth. Think Spanx but for athletes. Some athletes are even turning to high-tech undergarments that reduce wind resistance in order to reap every aerodynamic advantage. All the more reason to get your timing spot on. Not even wearing a watch. Do you want more sports info? We've got plenty more for you. Make sure you subscribe to our channel now. Go on. I'm watching you.